I'm Chris Atlanteris. I'm a social anthropologist here at the Center for Research in the Arts, Social Sciences and Humanities, or CRASH, of the University of Cambridge. And I was awarded a starting ERC grant in uh, the summer of 2013. Uh, so this is the fourth year of my project, uh, whose title is Visual Representations of the Third Plague Pandemic. Now this is the first project uh, combining anthropology and history in examining the first epidemic to be ever photographed uh, in human history. And that was uh, an epidemic of bubonic plague which star started in Hong Kong in 1894 and then it spread across the globe in every inhabited continent uh, actually very fast and causing more than or about 12 million deaths. What my project is interested in is precisely the fact that it was the first epidemic to be photographed and these photographs were made available to the general public as well as to medical scientists across the globe. It, it established a paradigm uh, for the way in which we visualize and we understand epidemics and pandemics to this day. Well, an ERC grant is a unique opportunity, something truly amazing in the sense that, first of all, it fosters interdisciplinary work. It also fosters analytical tools and uh, and the creation of new methods between the disciplines in order to analyze this visual record and its importance for today. So I am Marta Mirason Lar, and I work in the Leverhulme Center for Human Evolutionary Studies. Uh, it's in the Department of Archaeology and Anthropology here at Cambridge. I got a grant from the URC in 2012. So my project is called In Africa. I work with uh, late human evolution, and I'm interested in the evolution of modern humans and how he modern people became different from each other. So we actually have now the largest collection of uh, human fossils for this period in the whole of the continent, which is extraordinary. So what is special about an ERC grant? Well, an obvious side is that it's a lot of money. But I think it's more than just the money. The the ERC grant, first because it's five years, it allows you to, to get a group and build a, really, a real good community around the project you're doing. It also allows you to explore things in more depth. David Balcom, I'm Professor of Botany in the Department of Plant Sciences. The first project was following up some work that we had done before, actually, I came to Cambridge in 2007 we discovered a novel type of regulator, genetic regulator in plant cells. It turns out they're small RNA molecules and it turns out that plants have them, animals have them, they're part of the tree of life. And um, in the ERC project, the first ERC project, we were just following up precisely how these little small RNAs do what they do in plant cells. Um, the second project is an evolution, if you like, from the work that we did in the first project. And it involves this whole topic of epigenetics. And you can think of epigenetics as really being molecular memory. So cells have a way of remembering what they have experienced, either genetic experience or environmental experience. And it's taken us into an interest in hybrid plants. But we're finding out about epigenetics, hybrid vigor, and this is influencing, or I think it will influence, um, three things. Firstly, um, our approach to making hybrid crops. It'll influence our thinking about how evolution works, uh, because hybridization is an integral process in normal evolution, both in plants and animals. And thirdly, uh, it's leading us to a, a new technology that we hope will find application in the field. We've developed an approach to improving crops and we call it epigenetic modification. So my name's Ottilie Miser and I am the director of the Saint Tree Laboratory at the University of Cambridge. Mm. I have an ERC Advanced Investigator Award to look at the ability of plants to change their development in response to the environmental conditions in which they're growing and uh, we're interested in particular in shoot branching and how plants adjust their shoot branching depending on nutrient availability. And one of the things that is very useful about that is that um, from a, uh, an agricultural point of view, um, we should be able to use the, that understanding of how plants um, prioritise their uh, 
decisions about what to do in different nutrient conditions to keep high yields with low fertilizer supply that ultimately would be a, an application for what we're doing so the ELC um, um, ethos is really a very exciting opportunity for scientists it's something that particularly in plant science has not really been available before um, that's these five-year longer time window projects with a substantial resource really to to break into a new area a new way of, of thinking about a problem and and that's what we've been able to do with this grant and what the ERC has really um, given us the opportunity to do is as I say take our molecular understanding that we've built up in um, over many years now out into this much broader question about variability in in nature and and what that might mean for the different adaptive strategies of of, of plants and uh, we could not have done that without the the um, five-year uh, opportunity that ERC provides and the um, emphasis they have on, on taking things in new directions. They really value that in a way that a lot of grant funding schemes don't. They, 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 want, you, they want to see that slow build rather than the, the kind of risky step in, into the unknown. I'm Nicholas Thomas. I'm the Professor of Historical Anthropology and also the Director of the Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. And in 2013, we began a project, Pacific Presences, Oceanic Art and European Museums, that responded to vast collections of ethnographic material, artefacts and works of art in many museums in Europe. Those collections consist of extraordinary works of art and ordinary articles of material culture. They amount to tens, hundreds of thousands of artefacts that are hugely important resources um, for people in the Pacific. They exemplify the material heritages of their ancestors, ways of life that have changed. Pacific Presences, the project, uh, was about methodological innovation, thinking through how we work with collections. It was also about getting to grips with those collections, understanding what was there, understanding what its significance is in the present for communities, for scholars, for researchers. European funding has been enormously important for us. Uh, it's enabled us to, to, to realise a very ambitious project that's engaged with scattered material evidence very extensive bodies of material evidence to draw specialists together, to engage in wonderful conversations with curators and academic researchers across Europe, but also to bring people from the Pacific, descendants of the people who made these artefacts, who often have extraordinary knowledge of them. We've been able to create dialogues between academic researchers, curators, community members, contemporary Pacific art artists and others, um, those dialogues have resulted in publications, exhibitions, new artwork. I'm Clive Oppenheimer. I'm Professor of Volcanology in the Department of Geography at the University of Cambridge. I was involved, involved as a partner of an NERC project led by a colleague at the University of Orléans. And the focus of the project was to understand how volcanoes erupt, why they erupt in particular ways, uh, whether they're violent or whether they're more passive. And the key to that was studying the gases that are dissolved in molten rock that fuels volcanoes. So we linked together some field observations and some analytical work of rock samples collected at volcanoes with also numerical models of the physics and chemistry of how magmas, how molten rock rises up through the crust to erupt at the surface. Uh, the ERC grant was, was absolutely crucial uh, in providing resource for for human resource of being able to uh, recruit a PhD student and also some postdocs and in particular I had a PhD super student I supervised here in Cambridge who came uh, on fieldwork to Antarctica with me on several occasions where we collected some very very detailed observations of an active volcano looking at the gases that come out of it and looking at the behavior of its lava lake. There are a number of things that came out of it. One, one is that this uh, former PhD student is now a postdoc, very successful, and applying what uh, he studied uh, as a PhD student. It was a wonderful interaction with, with the colleagues in France. I spent some time in Orléans where we had an opportunity to really discuss in detail uh, what it was we were trying to do and also um, 
to enable that meeting of minds between a geologist, myself, and, and a physicist, the, the PI of this project. Mm. And also some wonderful facilities in France that, that we, we don't have here, a state-of-the-art laboratory doing experimental work on, um, on simulating volcanic processes in, in laboratory. Uh, also, we got, we got some fabulous um, research outputs from it. Our, we made some really remarkable and, and, for me, very surprising observations of the behaviour of this volcano. Um, even though we worked on a remote volcano in Antarctica, it gave us a generic understanding pertinent to, to vol volcanism worldwide. And these are sort of very essential, fundamental processes that, that we find on, on all volcanoes. Okay, so I'm Ruth Cameron and I'm in the Material Science Department. Uh, my ERC grant is to make uh, three-dimensional environments for regenerative medicine. What the grant has enabled us to do with that is to work with specialists um, across a, a range of fields um, and we've got three applications that we're working with in the, on the ERC grant. Uh, so we're working with um, cardiac patches. So the idea there is to create a structure that um, will deliver stem cells to uh, the heart after a heart attack, which would enable the, the heart to, to regenerate itself. Mm. Uh, we're using it in breast cancer research, uh, and we're also using them in bioreactors to create uh, blood platelets from blood, blood donations. Uh, it's uh, enabled us to put a really coordinated programme of research together to enable us to work with the specialists in a really cross-disciplinary way. Um, so rather than having uh, individual uh, short projects, we've really been able to put things together in a much more systematic and coordinated way that's enabled us to really to get this, this base technology absolutely uh, tied down. Um, and that has meant that we've really got a platform technology that uh, is already something that we can begin to look at other clinical targets for, so beyond the original scope of the grant. Okay, so I'm um, Professor Chris Jiggins here in the zoology department, and um, we study butterflies and in order to understand the process of evolution and uh, how genomes evolve, but also trying to relate what happens in, in the jungles of South America with what happens in the genomes of these butterflies. And the project is about um, understanding how the genomes of species diverge through the process of speciation. So speciation is the formation of new species. It was what kind of ins inspired Darwin, the big question that Darwin was interested in, in resolving. And, uh, and, and nowadays people are very interested in how that process of the formation of new species affects the genomes of those butterflies as they as they or not just butterflies, but of any organisms as they evolve into new species. So what was uh, exciting about the ERC project really was trying to bring together an understanding of um, what's happening in the genomes. So there's processes like recombination and mutation and, uh, and those processes happening in the genomes of the butterflies with uh, what's happening with the butterflies and their behavior. So we go out to um, South and Central America and we study um, uh, and how these butterflies behave and we bring them into the, uh, the cages in Panama and we do crossing experiments and we can look at how um, the genetic basis for um, the things that make species different, so in other words how they prefer to choose mates and what their, their ecology is. Sure. So my name is Deborah Siaski, I am the reader at the Institute of Astronomy and Kabbalah Institute for Cosmology here in Cambridge and I'm working in uh, theoretical and numerical cosmology and galaxy formation. I have uh, uh, won the starting grant for ERC a couple of years ago. And the main uh, topic of this grant was to study how galaxies and the supermassive black holes that we find in the center of these galaxies uh, co-evolve together. Having an ERC award made a whole difference because I managed to attract a really competitive and internationally leading team which otherwise would have been uh, almost impossible to, to get. So I could uh, hire top-end uh, postdocs, researchers in the field I'm working on. Very nice thing about the ERC awards, uh, there, there are several, but I would like to point out two. One is the timescales. So it gives you a little bit longer time because the awards are over five years to really build up the team and establish your research. So the five years gives you time to expand and really tackle some of the major problems in astrophysics rather than uh, doing some incremental research. So this is really fantastic. And I think the second thing that is really good, it offers not, not only support for staff, 
and, and, and some postdocs and students, but it offers also uh, support for accessing the uh, uh, facilities. So the, nowadays it's not all about uh, only people working with you, but having access, in my particular case, to the world-leading supercomputers, and without the ERC grant, this would have been very difficult. Hi. My name is Professor Simon Goldhill, and I run an ERC senior grant project, which is called the Bible and Antiquity in 19th Century Culture. And the reason why this project has been so important to me is that it's given me the unique opportunity to do a genuinely interdisciplinary collaborative project with the time and space it takes to make such interdisciplinarity work. This is a huge field. I've got eight postdocs and five professors working together for five years. We have a chance to trust each other, to learn each other's languages, to really explore the interface between topics as widely separated as classical philology, stained glass windows, or the deep sides of theology. Most importantly, the financial model offered by this sort of project enables us to do work that is 15 or 20 years ahead of the rest of the world, and Britain in Europe is all the stronger for it. So this is a, a, a great opportunity to work with other people over a period of five years, which is something very unusual and very unique, and with a quite liberal framework. So you are able to, to change and shift your questions, to reform them, to reformulate them. It's not as if you are stuck with the questions of your initial hypothesis. Well, for me, it means freedom above everything. You know, when you are constrained by both time and money, you cannot afford to take risks. So I think that for me, having the ERC, it was that. Yes, I think risk-taking, which in science nowadays is so is difficult to get funding or something that is slightly risky, um, the potential, it potentiates the research you're doing. But I think that it also allowed the people, not just me, but you know the PhD students and the postdocs in the project, allow them the freedom to go their own lines. And so it becomes also a stepping point for their career. Uh, so in that sense, it's unique. No other grant has done it. I think it allows you to do two things. So, and, and they seem conflicting in a way. So one thing is it allows you to set up a big project. They're very large grants and you can put several people looking at different sides of a research question. And so you can have a sort of larger integrated project. So that's one thing that it allows you to do. Uh, but the second, second thing it allows you to do is to follow up on, you know, uh, speculative, let's say long shot sorts of um, research question. You know, real progress in research is made when researchers can tackle big, important questions. Uh, blue skies research. And the ERC is a real opportunity for, uh, it, it's, a, it's a program that invites researchers to submit ambitious blue skies imaginative research projects. And there aren't many other sources of funding that allow one to do that sort of thing. It's been an extraordinary fertile project and we wouldn't have been able to do that if we hadn't had European funding over a five year period and sufficient funding to support a really strong group of postdoctoral research fellows who've brought different perspectives and expertise to the project. One of the great benefits of the ERC project was, was its scale. I mean, it enabled purchase of, of some pieces of uh, state-of-the-art equipment, an X-ray tomograph. Uh, also, the, um, the team of of postdocs and PhD students. Uh, we all work together uh, with different skills, some doing computational modeling, some working in the laboratory, some doing the field work. And um, the flexibility, um, the scale, and, and the, the team that you can build, and, and all of the, the people involved have, you know, have gone on with their research careers in, in very productive ways. Yeah, I think, I think what's been really exciting for me has been, man, it has been putting together a team of people who are all working towards the same goal but have very different skills and, and expertises. It, it also just gives you the freedom to, to explore different areas and to um, uh, a, bit more, a bit more of a long-term view of the, the project than you perhaps have from a standard three-year research grant. But, yeah. 
The result of having done this major project is that my own work has fundamentally changed, not just in the subject area that I've been able to work more in the 19th century, but just in the ability to explore the full scope of the sort of questions that I'm interested in and to have the full input of 12 wonderful colleagues. It's an extraordinary opportunity. Absolutely, it's, it's exceeded expectations. Thank you.